What is up you guys today we are going to go over how to scale your trading account and now while I do talk a lot about day trading and investing this video is primarily going to be for those of you who are traders so obviously I get a ton of questions primarily from beginners on how can I scale my trading account because I love the enthusiasm I love that so many people want to just start trading they want to start making money they want to quit their jobs they want to do this full-time and while those are awesome dreams and aspirations to have you have to understand the realistic aspects of trading as well as actually knowing how to grow and scale an account for maybe five hundred dollars a thousand dollars to twenty thirty forty thousand dollars the biggest aspect of this is going to be learning patience and not really caring about the money and I know that that might kind of sound counterproductive because that's why we're trading this is why we're building this skill but think to yourself that if I were to give you a portfolio with a hundred thousand dollars in it and I said you're not allowed to take this money out until you grow this hundred thousand dollars to two hundred thousand dollars doesn't matter if you can do it in a week a month ten years would you actually know how to scale a huge portfolio because a lot of people think to themselves if I could just get rid of the PDT rule if I just had X amount of money everything would be fine and I could trade and you know I would just I'd be a millionaire by now and the truth is that that's not really going to happen you have to learn how to grow a small account that's the biggest thing that people overlook and so in this video we're actually going to go over my main tips on how I scaled my portfolio throughout the years and how you guys can start scaling yours I always tell my students build the skill and the money will follow it's very simple but if you really learn to build and treat this as a skill the money will eventually come but because you guys are gonna want a step-by-step -step formula and actions that you can take today we're gonna to go over that and the first step is to log every single move you make in the stock market I tell my students all the time that you need to keep a trading log and maybe even a trading journal because we know that trading and investing 80 to 90 percent of it is going to be psychological but if you don't want to keep a trading journal if that seems kind of weird then at minimum you need to have a trading log because what you do not track you cannot fix so you need to track your wins your losses your break-evens everything and you can use something simple like this they're gonna put up on the screen right now but in reality the only thing that you need to track is the actual ticker the price of the stock how much money you have in it because position is a lot and we're going to talk about that later as well as what your potential risk and your potential reward is because if you can map all of this out before you take the trade you're not going to make an impulsive decision if you start to make a ton of money and you want to get out early or if you start to lose a lot of money off of the bat as well and the most important thing especially if you're not going to have a trading journal is going to be to have a little notes section on your spreadsheet or whatever you're going to have this on that you're going to say in the notes why you took the position was there a specific pattern what was the specific reasoning that you were going to take this position and most of all how were you feeling you know I talk about it a lot but were you feeling relaxed that day did you take too big of a position and you kind of felt sick to your stomach you know if you're physically sick and we're going to talk about that later it's not a good time to trade and you know you're using too much money and some days you're just not going to feel like trading and that's fine there are days that I just decide I don't feel like trading or maybe I have a swing trade in place and I set a couple of alerts and I go about my day and there's other days like today where I just will sit there for three hours four hours straight I'll watch everything I'll track everything I'll take some day trades and those days obviously I do pretty well for myself but that's not saying that the days that I just hold a swing trade or the days that I don't trade at all those are equally as important and now after months yes months of data tracking you know even if you don't have the money to learn to take losses and to and to find out all this data you can paper trade but after months of tracking all this data we're gonna have to look over it as a whole and you have to think to yourself and you have to see for yourself with your own eyes because data will not lie what patterns are making you the most money what specific position sizes are you losing the most money on how did you feel when you took a bigger position than normal all of this data will tell you what you're good at and then once you have the data telling you what specific things you're good at then you have to test those patterns and test that strategy all over again 
because formulating your own strategy is one of the most important things. And that's why I started my personal academy to teach people my strategy. And we have people in the academy who really like and adapt to the strategy that I have. And we have others that are like, okay, Pete, cool. I'll take some things from your strategy, some you know pieces from other people's strategy, and I'll formulate my own. But finding your own strategy really comes from taking the data and learning what you're good at and working with that. And the second thing is going to be position sizing. Now, once you have that data like we talked about, you're going to see what position sizing works for you. For me, personally, I trade with about $5,000 to $7,000 per position when I'm trading shares. Now, options are going to be different. With options, I trade with around sometimes as low as $500 to start a position all the way up to $2,000. But knowing what position sizing you're comfortable with is the most important thing. Guys, I lost a ton of money when I first started trading. And it was because I tried to go in with way too big of a position all of the time. And once I had scaled my portfolio to about 10, 15, $16,000, I started trading with my full portfolio every single time. And I lost a lot of money because I was trading with way more than I was used to. Position sizing is going to be what makes or breaks you as a trader. Because if you're physically sweating, if you're freaking out, you're watching every single candle on the ticker and you're freaking out every time it goes up or every time it goes down, you're trading with way too much money. And we're going to talk about risk management in a bit, but risk tolerance is different for everybody. If I lose or make three, four, five, six hundred bucks, it's not a big deal to me. One, because I've been trading for a very long time, so I'm used to it. And two, because I'm trading with more money than your average person. If you see that your portfolio is going up 10, 20, 30, 40 bucks and you start to freak out, you're trading with too much money. Even that small amount of money is you know pretty big to some people who have not been trading for a long time. So what you have to do is reverse engineer this. You have to start with, say you have a thousand dollar portfolio. Never put the full thousand dollars into a position. Maybe start with a hundred bucks. If you can trade with a hundred bucks and not really care and stay cool and stay calm and stay calculated with your positioning, great, move it up to 200. Same thing, move it up to 300, cool. Maybe you move it up to 700 bucks you start freaking out a little more. Maybe, you know, something breaks below a support. You're not going to cut the loss because you're like, oh, I'm down more than I normally am. I'm just going to hold it. And, and that that is what we're trying to avoid here. So find out what position size works for you the best. Stick with it. Be consistent with that position size. And once you can keep raising your position size with keeping your gains consistent, you know that you're onto something. Now, the third thing is going to be risk management. This is the most important thing when it comes to trading, when it comes to investing. I have tons of videos on it. I will link one down below from when I first started this channel, but the information is the same. The people who are going to be here four, five, six years from now are going to be the people who learn how to manage their risk, not the people who run from risk because you can't be a trader and investor if you're afraid of risk, but the people who know how to manage their risk appropriately. And that's why I am still here. That's why I made it through the tough times. And that's why 99% of traders fail because they cannot manage their risk. The truth is you're going to lose money. You are not going to make money every single trade. I don't make money every single trade. The people who are in my academy, you know, I don't make money every single day. I don't make money on every single trade, but that's okay. Learning and losing is a part of this game. And if you're not learning from your losses, then really you're just wasting your time here. So risk management is extremely important. And that goes back to understanding and learning what your best position sizing is. Because the honest truth is, I don't care if you made $5,000 today, throwing all of your money in UAVS or AYTU or something. I want to see that you're making consistent profits every single day, month over month, year over year because that is how you're going to become a millionaire and that is how you're eventually going to be able to quit your job and do this full time. And now when it comes to actually managing risk, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. You can set a max amount of money that you're willing to lose. You can set a max percentage of your portfolio that you're willing to lose or, and I, and, and I say you should do one of those two in the beginning, or if you're a more experienced trader like myself, you can set your you know stop losses at a break of pattern, but you have to be very diligent. You have to really know what you're doing if you're gonna base your risk management off of a break of pattern because 
You can lose a lot of money if you tell yourself, I'm going to take losses when it breaks this support. And then sometimes, it happens a lot, it'll break support and then it'll bounce right back up and you think to yourself, oh, I shouldn't have sold, you know, I would have made money instead I lost money. But the truth is that you did the right thing and you should sell when a pattern breaks whether you would have made or lost money. The point is that maybe at that time it wasn't the best decision to make that, but if you do that over and over, if you do the right things over and over, in the long run, you'll make a ton of money. Now the last piece to scaling your portfolio over time is going to be compounding. Now if you're a long-term investor, you probably know what compounding is, but it works as well in the stock market. But I wanna preface this section that if you're a newbie, if you've been trading less than one year, maybe even two years, your goal is not to make money, your goal is to stay alive. Your goal is not to blow up your account and your goal should be to learn every single thing that you can and just stay alive. I know that's not glamorous. I'm not one of those YouTubers who says you can just make a Robinhood account, learn to read charts, become a millionaire in two years and that's just not the truth, guys. Like, if you're a beginner, your goal is to stay alive. Once you can prove to yourself that you are good at this, that you can stay alive, then you need to focus on making consistent profits. Like I said earlier, I don't care if you make $5,000 today, how does your portfolio growth look over months and months and years and years? You should shoot for two to 5% returns per week. And now that might not sound like a lot, but I'm telling you, when you do it consistently, it is huge. 2% a week for one year is 104% and 5% a week for a year is 260%. Those returns consistently and compounded are insane when you think that on average the stock market only gives a 7% return a year. So now I'm gonna go over to the actual computer and I wanna show you the power of compounding interest in your portfolio with gains as little as two to 5% per week. So let's get going. So while two to 5% per week may not sound like a lot, it really is if you can do it consistently. So if you guys have never used this before, I use it in a lot of my videos. This is a website called Money Chimp. I'll put it down below in the uh, description. And this is called a compounding interest calculator. Let's say we are starting with $1,000. And we are not going to put any more money in this account for the entire year. And let's say that you could consistently get 2% return a week for 10 years. Now interest rate, this is on a yearly um, a, a yearly return. So if we did 2% times 52 weeks, that's 104%. So let's say 104%. If you could get, if you only started with $1,000 and you got 2% return a week, that would be $1.2 million in 10 years. So let's say that you're actually consistently able to get 5%. So 5% times 52 weeks is 260%. Let's see how much this changes. So 260%, we only have $1,000 to start, and we're gonna hit calculate. Look at that. The power of compounding interest, that is $365 million in 10 years on only 5% returns a week, which to me, that's pretty high. But to some people who are starting, they don't think the 5% a week is a lot. And I'm telling you, it is. So let's take a look at somebody like myself. Let's say I have a $35,000. $35,000. And let's say that, you know, every year I probably put outside of that about $15,000 into the market. Let's say I have... 30 years to grow this portfolio, and I am only going to shoot for 1% return a week, okay? So that would be 52% a year. If I only got 1% return a week, look at that. That would be 22 billion dollars a year. I mean, not a year, $22 billion over 30 years. Now, of course, that's very, very hard to do to consistently make 1% because what you have to realize, this is not taking into account, um, you know, compounding your money. Like if you wouldn't go throwing millions of dollars into day trades and swing trades to keep this percent return. So you do have to understand like that's not going to work. 
it's this is kind of unrealistic to get these kinds of numbers but let's just even say that you're starting with five hundred dollars and this is much more realistic you don't have any more money to put into your account well, let's say you can put a hundred bucks a month into your account um, which would be twelve hundred dollars a year okay and let's say that you have five years to grow and you have three day trades right because you're under the PDT rule let's say that you're gonna look for three percent returns so you're gonna try to get two to five percent per trade every week but of course you're gonna take some losses as part of the game so let's say you have three percent return a week that's your goal three percent times 52 weeks is 156 percent and we're gonna compound this if you were to do this if you were able to do this you would have $292,000 in only five years. That's the power of compounding. But that's why you shouldn't go out there and just try to make as much money as you can every single day. Think of it like baseball. We're not here to smash a grand slam every single time we step up to the plate. I am personally here to hit a bunch of singles every single time I'm at bat and then every once in a while strike out, but every once in a while hit a home run. That's the goal. That's the plan. And I just quickly want to show you the power of compounding your interest. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button, comment below, subscribe to this YouTube channel, guys. We're at almost 1,300 subscribers. That's insane. We only started this four months ago. I'm super excited to have you guys here. I'm super excited to grow. Until next time, I'll see you guys.